Alrighty, so so it's the end of the month. Um, it's like gonna be the end of January soon, and every month I kind of do a small exercise with myself where I track all the financial stuff that I have. So this includes um my cash, my equities, my stocks, my crypto, um, all that good stuff. Uh, and the reason I do it is to keep myself in check and give myself some accountability so I know that I'm on track to reaching the financial goals that I've set for myself. So this is a habit that I got into during COVID because, you know, in COVID we had so much time. So it was something that I was like, hey, let's just try this out and, and, and see how it goes. And today in this video, I'll be sharing with you the sheet that I'm using right now. Uh, we'll go through a tutorial as well, how you can create your own sheet. Okay, maybe not create your own sheet, but you could just copy my sheet and use it to key in all the data that you have. And like they say, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So I hope that this tracker will help you guys put things into perspective and it can help you on your financial independence journey as well. So without further ado, we're gonna jump straight into the computer screen and we're gonna go through the tutorial. Alrighty, so let's get started with the Excel sheet or the tracker that I have, that I've built for myself. I've uh, been using it for a while, did some upgrades as well. So what you're looking at is like version, maybe two, version three. Uh, the first few versions isn't the best. So uh, this is something I'm gonna release it out to everyone that so that you guys can use. Uh, it's for free. If you guys wanna subscribe to my sub stack, I think that would be that would be pretty awesome. But yeah, so let's jump into it. So there are four sheets here. Um, we're gonna see instructions, dashboard, overview dashboard, net worth tracker, dividend tracker. So we're just gonna go through all of them very quickly. Uh, instructions basically what you need to do is if you want to use this sheet as well you got to go to file make a copy and then you have a copy that will be in your Google Drive so that's pretty straightforward and easy to use if you want to subscribe there's a subscribe link here that you can visit my YouTube channel that would be great um, otherwise uh, we'll just move on to the next sheet which is the overview dashboard so in the overview dashboard, um, basically what I'm building here is and it's like a single page that I can see everything that I have in my portfolio right now. I think this is pretty important for me because I don't want to be going to individual sheets to just check and see what they have. And over here, I get to see like at one glance, I know what's my overall net worth, um, the dividends I've collected, um, the equities portfolio growth in percentage, the growth in SGD, and as well as my portfolio breakdown, which is something I really appreciate here. Because with the portfolio breakdown, it allows me to see um, in which segments I'm a little bit more lacking and in which segments I have a bit too much weightage of. So personally, I do have like a formula set for myself. Like I want to be exposed to like crypto. I want to be exposed to stocks. I want to be exposed to bonds as well. Um, and definitely we do have CPF. Uh, CPF is part of our net worth as well because we use it to purchase a house. And right now we are in the new room. So might be a little bit echoey, but that's that. Okay, so the third sheet, this is where the juice is, right? So all the important stuff you need is gonna be in this one sheet itself. So in this sheet, um, you get to see things like um, total net worth in property, total net worth without property and stuff like that. So what you need to take note of here is to only change the values that are in the yellow boxes, light yellow boxes. Uh, because everything else has a formula in it. So if you do change all those as well, it might kind of screw up the shit. So hopefully you guys don't. Um, you can just, um, you know, change around and play around with those in the yellow boxes. Okay, so there are a few segments here. So under the assets, we have cash, CPF, crypto, stocks, bonds, property. And then we also have liabilities where we have like loans. So some of you might have um, student loans. Some of you might have housing loans. So um, I differentiate into two different segments. We have liabilities with the loans. So this could be any other loan except housing loan. And then we also have the housing loan portion. So this is mainly going to be uh, what you owe to the government or the bank, uh, depending on, on, on whichever uh, instrument you use. So at the bottom here, these are just some tables for calculation. Um, please do not change this as well. Uh, these have all have formulas that will affect the main overview dashboard here. So um, only change those that are in yellow. Uh, and let me just quickly walk you through this. So let's look at assets. Uh, we have cash. Um, so this could be things like your fixed deposits, your high yield savings account, um, anything that is cash related. So for example, I've given quite a few fields here. Um, so like bank one to six, fixed deposit one to four, you can change this to any title you want. So this could be like DBS, 
um, OCBC 360, um, let's say Trust Bank. So depending on what bank you have, and then you just fill in the numbers accordingly. So let's say maybe DBS, I have like $2,000, I'm going to put 2000 in. And then maybe um, OCBC, I have 5000 uh, maybe 10000 in Trust Bank. So these are all just hypothetical numbers, right? So let's say if you do have fixed deposits, this could be like, you know, FD1, um, you know, uh, at 4% or whatever. Oops, 4%, close. Okay, and then you can put in like, oh, maybe $20,000. So this is just a hypothetical number. If you do have it, um, you could just put it in. Otherwise, it's, you could just leave it blank as well. So for fields that you have nothing... Um, no values here. Yeah, I think it's fine to just leave all these as it is because they will not pull all this stuff in when there is no numbers here. So you could just leave it as it is. CPF, very straightforward. If you log into your CPF app, you are able to see the breakdown in your OA, your SA, and your Medisave as well. So uh, based on the people that are watching, I don't think you guys have an SRS account. But if you guys do need an SRS account, um, let me just add one more in here so that it helps you guys as well. Okay, so let's say 20,000 here, SRS 5,000. Okay, so these are all just rough estimates. Uh, next on cryptocurrency, my favorite topic. Um, so in cryptocurrency, is a little bit unique. Uh, so I've added a note here. So if you do have like a sing dollar conversion for your cryptocurrencies, you could just um, update it in this box here which will cover away the formula but you know uh, most of my exchanges they are all in USD so this could be like you know Binance this could be Coinbase this could be Qcoin you know whichever exchanges you are using or this could even be wallets right so let's say you have Qcoin but you have like MetaMask right so you can put MetaMask uh, maybe you got like $2,000 in MetaMask um, I don't know, $7,000 in Coinbase, something like that. All right, next on, we move to stocks and equities. So this will include things like your, um, all the equities that you have, right? So it could be like Tiger Brokers, um, it could be Mumu, it could be um, IBKR, Weibo, Whatever you guys have, just plunk all these numbers in. It will make your life a lot easier so you're able to see everything in one spreadsheet. Oh, by the way, if you guys want to sign up, um, I'll leave some links in the description down below so you guys can sign up as well. Okay, next up, we have bonds. So bonds is something that I've added recently into my portfolio. Um, I've been adding it since COVID time. So most of my bonds here are like SSB, right? SSB, um, I'll put T-bills here as well. So... Depending on how much you have, you could just add some numbers here, $10,000. Um, some of you might have other bonds, like uh, previously I had extra bonds. So like extra, extra bonds, um, $15,000 or whatever. Lastly, we have properties. So this is mainly uh, more for people that already have um, one or two houses. So I do have a house here. So, you know, maybe we'll just, for the sake of like um, numbers, we'll just put like, okay, this is the property value that we have. All right, so moving on, this shows you your total assets with property. You are like 400, 408,000, um, pretty good. Um, but without property, you are looking at uh, 264,475. All right. Next, we have liability. So liability is a little bit tricky. Uh, so over here, are things that you might want to put in, uh, things like maybe like um, student loans, um, you know, credit card loan, uh, personal loan so any kind of loans that you have that is not related to your property you could just put it in here so maybe let's say um, $20,000 of student loan $2,000 of credit card loan 15k of personal, of personal loan ideally your loans your liability section should have as little numbers as possible uh, that would be the best way to kind of keep your finances on track Next, we have housing loan. So housing loan, um, so this could be maybe like, mine's like HDB, right? So like HDB loan, uh, let's like put like, you know, 75,000 for something. Alrighty, so once all your numbers are in, you can see that some of these numbers have just automatically updated, which is pretty cool. 
And what you want to do next is, let's say if you do have uh, dividend stocks or do, you do have dividends coming in, so this is where you go to the fourth sheet and you only change the values in yellow again. So the platforms here, um, it could be platforms, it could be brokers. So for example, it could be Tiger Brokers, um, maybe Scythe, um, you know, Webull, whatever you have. Uh, and then what you want to do is to put in your SING dollar as well as the USD that you collect. Because sometimes there are some stocks that I get dividends for in USD. There are some stocks I get dividends for in SGD. So let's say we get like $10, $15 of um, dividends in January. And then uh, for Singapore dollars, we get $20. So everything here will be automatically calculated with a table here that allows you to see an overview. So do not change those in yellow again. Um, just uh, change those in yellow, not those in white. Alrighty, so once we have all this and we go back to the overview dashboard, you can see that it automatically populates all the different numbers that we have. So the numbers might look a little bit strange now because we only create in February, right? Uh, January. So you can see like in January, we have this amount. February is zero because the month of February haven't uh, come yet. So what you want to do is probably update this on a month-to-month -month basis. And as you update all this information on a monthly basis, you will see the numbers start to change. So with the magic of editing, um, I'm just going to add some numbers and I'm going to show you how it looks like. Alright, so we've added all those numbers in uh, and then you can see like the numbers start to change a little bit. That shows you a little bit more data here. So what you can see is that the dividends collect... Oh, let me update this as well. So let's say... Let's say 100, $150, uh, $20 again. So all these charts are updated in real life. Um, you are able to see how much dividends you have collected so far as well with a little icon here. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you get to see the whole breakdown here as well. So you know like property, I have 150,000 debt, um, cash 46,000, CPF 86, crypto, stocks, and bonds. So over here, it gives me a good breakdown of what I can look at to increase a little bit more and what I can look at to decrease a little bit more. So in this case, uh, because we do have property here, I might improve this a little bit before this video goes out. So what you're looking at now, is like version 2.5, 3.5. But um, yeah, let me add in another pie chart here that allows you to have a portfolio breakdown without your property as well, if that is what you're interested in because some people are pretty interested in those. Uh, maybe another one without CPF as well, so you are able to see um, you know, how much equities that you have or like the liquid cash or just your assets alone without CPF itself. So basically, this is going to be the formula sheet, tracking sheet that I'm going to use for the whole of 2024. Um, if you guys do appreciate it, um, I'll greatly appreciate if you get do drop a like on this video. Um, subscribe to my subs that is something new I'm trying so I can put monthly updates into an email list that drops you what I'm doing on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, that helps me a little bit, gets, let, allows me to know what you guys are thinking about, um, what else I can share with you guys and you know see what other content that we can do. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. I think this tutorial will be a pretty short one. Shouldn't be too hard to navigate around all these sheets. Um, just take note not to change those in yellow. I think if you don't change those, you'll be fine. But as always, if you have any other questions about this sheet, um, personal finance, anything that you want to find out or chat about, do let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video.